Welcome back to the design of the Mobile Modular Room Robot M2R2. In the previous video we have assembled the robot base with stepper motors. We chose the steppers NEMA 17, the drivers DRV8825 and the starting wheels metallic mechanum wheels of 60mm diameter. We talked about 3D printing parts that we needed to create. These parts as well as the entire robot that we built so far are on my GrabCAD account and you can find it in, with the link in the description. If you haven't watched the previous video I encourage you to do so. I will not talk about the design choices in this video, only about the electronic components that we need to make the robot move. In the next two videos we will go through the power electronics and the microcontroller that we are going to use on the M2R2. The first step is to talk about the components that we have already placed on the robot. We will look at the pinouts of the drivers and the motors. We will talk about what exactly we need to charge and control them. The second step will be to talk about the microcontroller. Which pins are we going to use and how to connect them with the rest of the electronics and what kind of power input it requires. In the third step we will choose the batteries needed to charge the M2R2. We will talk about the current and the voltage that we are getting from the batteries. As a last step we will choose a DC to DC converter to stabilize the motor's voltage input. Even though the drivers can have an input from 8 to 45 volts and we can easily charge them directly from the battery, here we will use a stable 12 volt to have a more predictable movement control. Let's start now with the motor drivers. As mentioned before, I chose the DRV8825 motor driver for the M2R2. This driver will run stepper NEMA 17. So let's see the wires coming out of the stepper. As you can see here, there are four wires coming out of the motors. The motors usually come with their own cables, which help us see how to connect the motor to the driver. You can notice that the middle wires are crossing each other's paths and that they are ending in a different position than the one they started in. This should be kept this way even after we cut the end connector and reduce the length of the motor cables. So keep that in mind. Here you can see the driver. We connected the motor on these four pins here. Pins A1 and A2 are for one coil of the motor and B1 and B2 are for the other one. There is no need to concern yourself with the orientation of the connector. This will change the rotation direction of the motor but we will solve that inside the software. NEMA 17 needs an input of 12 to 24 volts to work. We connect this input to the V mod and GND here. On the other side of the driver there are pins for the microcontroller. We need to connect the reset and the sleep pins with the positive 5 volt used for logic power supply. We also need to connect the logic's common ground on the opposite side on the pin GND. From this we can see that to make the motors work we need two power sources. 5 volts and minimum of 12 volts. It's always a good practice to separate these sources so that the motors don't damage the rest of the electronics. For right now we will use two different types of batteries here. One to power up the logic and the other for the motors. Last thing that we need to connect to the driver is the microcontroller. Here we need any two digital pins connected with the step and the DIR pins on the driver. This is enough for now to make the motors work. I will not go into more technical details about the driver or the motor. You can always google them and research them yourself if you have the need to know more. In this series I will only talk about the details that we absolutely need to make the robot move. Now let's talk about the microcontroller. As you may have already noticed, my choice for this build is the Arduino Nano. It's very easy to work with and in comparison to some other Arduino boards, it's rather small. This makes it easy for us to place it on the robot as it occupies little space. It has a micro USB plug which makes it easy to program and pins usually come pre-soldered. When running a code we can easily reach the restart button to test the routine again. The number of pins is just right for our need here and it comes with a communication method which is rather simple to use. Arduino Nano has 13 digital input output pins and 8 analog pins. I2C communication which we will use and discuss later in the series uses A4 and A5 pins. 
This you have to keep in mind when occupying the pins for the sensors. Because each nano that we use on the M2R2 has to have these pins free for I2C. Nano has the built-in voltage regulator for 5V output if needed. It can be powered in a couple of ways. Directly with 5V through a 5V input or output pin or through the regulator with 7 to 12 volt input connected to the VIN pin. The third way it can be powered is via micro USB, which we use when we upload the code. Here we will power up the Nano through the VIN pin. I will show you that in the next video, in which we are going to show the schematics and connect everything together. Last thing about the Arduino Nano board that I would like to mention now is that it has a beginner-friendly programming interface called Arduino IDE. This is a great way to start learning programming and it's often used to teach robotics programming even to younger audiences from about 8 years old. On the screen now you can see the position I have chosen for the Nano. I have used very small brackets to attach to the base. These Nano pins are pointing towards the center of the robot because we will try to have all of the wires going through the middle, creating a sort of a tunnel for the wires. Micro USB is pointing towards the side of the robot which I have in this way pronounced to be the front of the robot. This and the orange color of the brackets are the markings used to define a robot's front. This will be useful to us when we start to program the motion. Ok, now we are done with the second part. And now we have all the base electronics and we have the idea what kind of voltage inputs we need. So we can start to put the batteries on the robot and connect everything together. I have found that building the schematics is much easier than actually building all the cables. In the assembly video we will see how to build the cables and what kind of tools I have used. But in the next video I will plan all the cables by making them in the CAD. This is actually very tedious and takes a lot of time to do, but it helps to reduce the length of the cables. I don't really recommend you to do this because it uh, takes a lot of time to make. If you like the video, please give it a like, and if you would like to see further development of the M2R2, please subscribe. I would like to hear your opinion, so please share any comments on the state of the M2R2 so far. I will try to introduce your suggestions in the next build, or maybe later in this build. Thank you all for watching, and see you next time. Bye!